In this session, we will try to discuss about first week development of an embryo. After fertilization, what are all the different developmental changes which occur within the embryo in first week? Those changes we will see now. For that, I am taking uterus with fallopian tubes. This is fundus of uterus and this is another side fallopian tube. So this is fimbriated end of fallopian tube. This is the body of uterus. This is cervix of uterus. Clear? Then, this is the wall of fallopian tube. This is the wall of fallopian tube. And here, this is the wall of uterine cavity. So this is uterine cavity and here this is cervix no, cervix contain cervical canal. Right? All of you must be aware of cervix will be opening into vaginal canal. Right? Here you can observe what is it ovary here ovary ovary contains different phases of developing follicles in the cortex that we have studied in the ovarian cycle right let me draw a little larger. Okay. So this is ovary. Within the ovary, there will be inner, medulla, outer cortex. Cortex contains different phases of developing follicles. So primordial follicles, primary follicles, Multilayered primary follicles, secondary follicle, and mature follicles. Okay, actually, in normal circumstances, only one follicle will mature. That we have already discussed. See, this primary oocyte surrounded by flattened follicular cells. This follicle, what we call primordial follicle right so like this so many primordial follicles will be there that means around 40,000 at the puberty in each menstrual cycle or in each ovarian cycle 12 to 15 start developing only one will mature so this is primordial follicle converts into primary follicle after conversion of these flattened cells into cuboidal cells then it will be converted into multilayered primary follicle right at this stage there will be formation of one glycoprotein layer surrounding the 
oocyte that is zona pellucida then these follicular cells further proliferate and forms so many layers clear so this is primary oocyte surrounded by follicular cells right so in between the follicular cells there will be formation of some fluid filled spaces these fluid filled spaces united to form big space that space what we call antrum or antrum follicle so here antrum will be formed once you observe antrum this follicle what we call secondary follicle i am going bit faster because we have already discussed about it surrounding these follicular cells after formation of antrum these cells what we call granulosa cells and the cells which are present around the oocyte what we call cumulus oophorus cells clear and here zona pellucida then surrounding this granulosa cells there will be another layer which produces estrogen what is that theca interna theca interna surrounded by connective tissue layer that connective tissue layer what we call theca externa now this secondary follicle enlarges and forms mature follicle here mature follicle i am drawing this is primary oocyte but this primary oocyte 3 hours before the ovulation or 3 hours prior to the ovulation it completes its first meiotic division and produces first polar body and secondary oocyte so this is secondary oocyte now because now it is ready to ovulate so this secondary oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida and this zona pellucida surrounded by cumulus oophorus cells and then surrounding the antrum granulosa cells right so these are granulosa cells surrounding the granulosa cells theca interna cells theca interna surrounded by connective tissue layer that is theca externa right simple it has been enlarged but i drawn almost equal but imagine this is bit larger than this now at the 14th day of menstrual cycle secondary oocyte comes out from the ovary that process what we call ovulation this will be assisted by luteinizing hormone and other factors which you have studied in the ovulation right so now this oocyte ovulated now here secondary oocyte that means over the surface of ovary secondary oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida here you can found first polar body and cumulus oophorus cells which will be surrounding this oocyte actually these cumulus oophorus cells now we are no more calling as cumulus oophorus cells we are calling as corona radiata cells why these cumulus oophorus cells withdraw their microvilli and arrange loosely around the secondary oocyte clear now these cells what we call corona radiata cells then once it's ovulated this remaining follicle converts into corpus luteum this remaining follicle will be converted into corpus luteum after infoldings 
this corpus luteum produces both estrogen and progesterone right then what is the fate of it it will be aspirated into the fallopian tube it will be aspirated into the fallopian tube let me draw a bit right because of ciliary beads there will be creation of fluid current within the lumen actually at the time of ovulation fimbriated end applies closely over the surface of the ovary and moves forwards and backwards like sweeping movements and this ovum will be aspirated into it because of fluid current created within the fallopian tube clear now this oocyte is here secondary oocyte with first polar body and this is surrounded by zona pellucida and this zona pellucida surrounded by corona radiata cells now at the same time actually i am drawing here actually ampulla will be here clear but i need some space to draw remaining diagrams that's what i am drawing here so it has been reached here and it will be waiting for the sperm clear around that time if sexual intercourse happen semen will be deposited in the vagina and worms which are present in the semen will be passing through the cervical canal uterine cavity fallopian tube and reaches to the secondary oocyte and one of the sperm which they have reached here one of them will fertilize with the secondary oocyte and forms zygote clear so both male pronucleus and female pronucleus united and forms ooted and replication of dna in both male and female pronucleus then condensation of chromosomes after that all maternal and paternal chromosomes that means chromosomes from the oocyte and chromosomes from the father that means chromosomes from the sperm arranged in the equator plane at the metaphase of first cleavage division clear so up to that we have studied in the fertilization actually up to this we have already studied but for revision i have explained right now after fertilization here imagine these are the paternal chromosomes that means chromosomes which are from the father and here these are chromosomes from the mother here also chromosomes from the mother right this is the fertilized zygote and this zygote is surrounded by zona pellucida so here zona pellucida and these chromosomes arranged in the equator plane and entangled and entangled within the what is it within the spindle they will be entangled within the spindle right so these are the kinetochore microtubules attached to the kinetochore of 
chromosome. These are anchoring microtubules attached to the cell membrane. Clear? So this is spindle. Up to this we have studied. Now, this cell or this zygote in the metaphase of first cleavage division. Clear? Now, after metaphase, which phase will be there? After metaphase, anaphase will start. Ana means apart. There will be separation. What is separating here? See, this is sister chromatid and this is sister chromatid. This is sister chromatid and this is sister chromatid. Clear? Now, here is the centromere. In anaphase, longitudinal splitting of longitudinal splitting of centromere. So that these sister chromatids becomes daughter chromosomes. Right? So, this sister chromatid and this sister chromatids, they become daughter chromosome. So, here splitting of centromere or kinetochore. So that this half of the chromosomes will go to this pole and this half of the chromosomes will go to this pole. Right? Now, the appearance of zygote will be like this. This is Jonah Pilsida. Don't forget to draw Jonah Pilsida. Here, this is paternal chromosomes. Still, these chromosomes are attached by kinetochore microtubules. Clear? What has happened here? Because of contraction of kinetochore microtubules, splitting of centromere, so that sister chromatids became daughter chromosomes. Still, there will be contraction of kinetochore microtubules so that half of the chromosomes comes to one pole, remaining half will go to another pole. Right? So, anaphase completed. Next phase is telophase. In the telophase, you know it is a reorganization phase. Within the reorganization phase, what are all the reorganization processes will occur? See, disappearance of spindle. Spindle has been disappeared now and these chromosomes are decondensed. When they are decondensed, we cannot see like this. We can see just like a threads. Just we can see like a threads. Clear? Then, appearance of nuclear envelope, appearance of nuclear envelope and appearance of nucleolus. Then, there will be cytokinesis, that means cytoplasm will be divided. So, here cytokinesis cytoplasm dividing. Right? Now you can observe two cells. This stage is two cell stage. To become two cell stage, it takes around 30 hours. Now, in the first cleavage division, two cells has been formed. Within these two cells, one cell will be little larger and another cell will be little smaller. 
these cells what we call blastomeres what are these these cells what we are calling now blastomeres clear so now i am taking these two cells here and we will see how these two cells again they divide let's discuss that here zona pellucida still it is surrounded by zona pellucida don't forget to draw here two cells are there one cell is bit larger and another cell is bit smaller clear now this larger cell that means that larger blastomere this larger blastomere divides first division is similar like just mitotic division so it has been divided and formed three cell stage of embryo then the smaller cell undergo another cleavage division and forms four cell stage embryo to form four cell stage embryo it takes around 40 to 50 hours clear then these four cells again undergo cleavage division that means mitotic division so what is cleavage cleavage means successive divisions or successive mitotic divisions what we call cleavage right then these blastomeres again undergo cleavage division and forms eight cell stage right now here eight cell stage 2 3 clear at the eight cell stage this embryo appears to be loose clump of cells loose clump of cells clear and up to eight cell stage the cells which are present in the embryo are loosely attached clear after eight cell stage there will be tight compaction or tight adherence between the cells the tight adherence what we call compaction clear so very simple here imagine this is one cell and this is another cell and this is another cell clear before they were loose after eight cell stage these cells will adhere to each other by what we call cell surface cell surface addition glycoproteins clear and this process what we are calling compaction now what is the use of compaction why compaction should happen because it is necessary for the cell to cell communication and it is necessary for the segregation of inner cell mass and outer cell mass clear very simple after this stage marula will be formed right within the marula some cells will be present in the center those cells what we call inner cell mass and some cells will be present at the periphery those cells what we call outer cell mass for the segregation this compaction is necessary now one more thing i have to clarify up to eight cell stage maternal mrna maternal mrna will maintain the protein synthesis but after eight cell stage fetal genes will be activated clear so that those fetal genes will maintain the protein synthesis of its own i hope you understood after that these maternal mrna will be degenerated 
So these are the important changes will happen at the eight cell stage. Clear? Now these eight cells again undergo mitotic division and produces twelve cell stage. Imagine this is the twelve cell stage. Right? To form 12 cell stage, it takes around 72 hours. Clear? Then this 12 cell stage converts into marula. Actually, 12 to 16 cell stage of embryo looking like mulberry fruit. That's what that embryo, what we call marula. What is it? Marula. Clear? So here it is Marilla. Right? To form Marilla takes around ninety-six hours. Now this is Marilla. To form Marilla takes around ninety-six hours. Right? Here around fourth day this embryo will fell down. Will fell down where within the uterine cavity or it will reach us to the uterine cavity. Okay. Now one more important change will happen within the embryo. I have already told you in the marula there will be inner cells this is inner cell mass and at the periphery this is outer cell mass inner cell mass and outer cell mass inner cells are connected by gap junctions and outer cells connected by tight junctions right now as soon as entering into uterine cavity these outer cells will be differentiated into functional epithelium clear so that these epithelial cells can transport the fluid which is present in the uterine cavity into the embryo getting my point very simple around 32 to 64 cell stage of embryo these outer cells differentiated into epithelial cells that means functional epithelial cells and they transmit or they allow to pass fluid through them clear so if they allow fluid to pass through them what will happen within the embryo there will be appearance of some fluid filled spaces clear so these fluid filled spaces united and forms big cavity that big cavity what we call blasto seal right at that particular time the total embryo what we call blastocyst clear let me draw the diagram of it here these cells allows fluid to enter that's what within the embryo there will be appearance of fluid filled spaces imagine these are the what are these trophoblast cells these trophoblast cells are outer cells these outer cells allows the fluid to enter into it now here this is inner cell mass clear so within this there will be appearance of fluid filled cavities here these fluid filled cavities united and become big cavity right when it become big cavity how it will be appear it will be appearing like this it's like a cyst it will be appearing like a cyst
now these outer cells they become flattened these are flattened outer cells what we call trophoblast trophoblast means nutrition these are trophoblast and these inner cell mass cells are there no these cells are pushed to the one pole the pole which is attached by inner cell mass that pole what we call embryonic pole so imagine these are the inner cell mass now i am drawing inner cell mass cells with red color so imagine these are inner cell mass cells so because of the fluid which is present in the blastocyst inner cell mass will be pushed to the one pole so now this pole what we call embryonic pole because it is attached by inner cell mass clear so that inner cell mass now we are calling as embryoblast right so this is embryoblast and this is trophoblast this black color cells what i have drawn are trophoblast and this red color cells what we call embryoblast because these embryoblastic cells in future they are going to become embryo proper and these trophoblast cells they are going to become placenta and membrane that means fetal membranes clear right now here one more thing i have to clarify this appearance you cannot see in in situ that means if you take the blastocyst you cannot observe like that just simply you can observe as a ball just like a ball you can see just you can see like a ball right like your football it will be appearing like football these are the trophoblast cells of course still it is surrounded by totally it is covered by zona pellucida so when we make a section like this and if we see from this side then only you can observe like that let me draw that so here these are cut section of trophoblast cells right and inner cell mass will be attaching to the one pole of blastocyst so here inner cell mass clear i hope you understood very simple it will be like a ball right we are making the section and if you remove one half and if you see this remaining half within that you can see the trophoblast surrounding and in the center there will be cavity in the upper portion of that ball attachment of some cells these cells what we call embryoblasts clear i hope you understood because this imagination is very important that's what i am stressing very simple there is a ball okay within the ball in the upper part or at one pole of the ball there will be attachment of some cells those cells what we call embryoblast and if you make the section and if you see from this side you can see the trophoblast cells at the periphery in the center cavity right at the upper pole we can found embryoblast cells clear if you don't cut you cannot see the embryoblast cells clear 
So, this is the cut section of blastocyst, what I am showing to you. Right? Now, <clears throat> how many cells will be present in the blastocyst? How many cells will be there? There will be around 107 cells will be present. Right? Embryo blast 8. Embryo blast cells will be 8 in number. And trophoblast cells will be divided into two types. Right? See here, from here to here, these are the trophoblast cells. Right? Giving attachment to the embryo blast. Is it or not? So, these are the trophoblast cells which are giving attachment to embryo blast cells. So, these cells, what we call polar trophoblast cells. What are these? Polar trophoblast cells. Right? So, how many polar trophoblast cells will be present? 30 polar trophoblast cells. Then, remaining trophoblast cells, what we can call mural, mural, mural trophoblast cells. This mural trophoblast cells around 69. I think total 107. Right? So, this is about blastocyst formation and the cells which are present in the blastocyst. Still, blastocyst is covered by what? Jona pellucida. Around 4th day, it will be entering into uterine cavity. Around 2 days, it will be floating within the uterine milk and become blastocyst. Now, you may ask one question. See here, around fourth day it fell down in the uterine cavity. Here opening is there, here opening is there, here also opening is there, it may come out. Is it? Your doubt is genuine. But some preventing factor is there. What is that? After 14th day, actually 14th day ovulation. After 14th day, this corpus luteum will produce progesterone. Clear? This progesterone will initiate the cervical glands, the glands which are present in the cervix to produce more viscid and thick secretions like mucus. So, here there will be formation of mucus plug, right? So, more viscid secretions from the cervical glands. So, mucus plug will be formed because of that this embryo cannot escape right and one more thing after 16th day or 17th day that means two days after ovulation passage of sperms also impossible that means after 16 to 17th day of 28 days menstrual cycle pregnancy also impossible Clear? So, till now what we have discussed? Formation of blastocyst. Right? Now, implantation. What is that? This embryo has to enter into the endometrium. It has to enter into endometrium. That process what we call implantation. But the before implantation, one more process should happen. What is that process? Hatching. What is that? Hatching. That means removal of Jonah pellucida. Actually, Jonah pellucida will prevent the implantation in the abnormal sites. Actually, embryo should implant within the uterine cavity. But if there is removal of Jonah pellucida here itself, that means within the fallopian tube, there will be implantation within the fallopian tube. Clear? So, that's what hatching will occur just before implantation. Right? So, that means fourth day it has been reached, fifth and sixth day it will be floating and becoming blastocyst. Right? And around sixth day there will be removal of Jonah pellucida hatching. What are the factors which will influence the hatching? Here, 
within the uterine cavity there will be plasminogens plasminogens right these plasminogens activated by this trophoblast factors some factors will be released by trophoblast cells these factors will activates plasminogens when these plasminogens activates these plasminogens become plasmins plasmins right now these plasmins will digest or will remove the zona pellucida right now this process what we are calling hatching what is this process hatching clear now implantation i hope you understood the hatching very simple plasminogens will be present in the uterine milk activated by trophoblast factors after activation plasminogen converts into plasmin this plasmin will digest the zona pellucida clear now how implantation will occur actually implantation will happen in three steps or three phases first one is opposition second one is addition third one is invagination 